To get started with conditional simulation, I'll first load my point data. In this case, I have a drill hole file with gold grades in two domains. I'll group them by assay over domain, although it's worth noting that the conditional simulation component can also handle data sets grouped by domain over assay. Now that I have my data loaded, I simply add the component by right-clicking the data component and selecting conditional simulation from the add menu. You'll notice that the conditional simulation has already selected my gold assay and created the necessary components to run the conditional simulation. These components are each of the tail models and the variography for each domain. The tail models should already be set to linear by default and are currently using the maximum and minimum values. I'll leave these as is for now, but if you apply a cut to your data, you should check back to make sure these values are still appropriate. The other required component is the normal score variography, which is completed as usual. If you already have normal score variography completed for your assay, the component will automatically select the continuity models for you. Once we have all the necessary components updated, it's time to define the properties to run the simulation. The main properties window defines the general settings for the simulation. The first property box allows us to select the simulation method. It is currently set to sequential Gaussian simulation, however other methods can be selected here as they become available. The next property allows us to set the number of simulations we wish to run. To the right of this is a checkbox labelled Test Mode. Test Mode is a quick toggle for swapping between running a single simulation or the entered number. Next, we have a drop-down that allows us to choose either Simple or Ordinary Krieging for our Krieging method. And finally, a drop-down selection of the assay which we will be performing the simulation for. The rest of the properties on this panel are associated with defining the nodes within which we generate our simulations. There are three main ways to generate the nodes. Creating a grid from the specified region, creating from a block model, or importing nodes from a CSV. When creating nodes from the specified region, we need to define bounding ranges in the x, y, and z coordinates within which to produce the node grid. As a starting point, the minimum and maximum range for each direction will automatically be calculated from the input data. We also then need to define a block size that will act as both the default reblocking size and also provide a framework for generating a denser grid of points. Most importantly, we need to ensure that the dimensions of the block is divisible into the range specified for our x, y and z directions, otherwise an error will be reported. We can then define the number of points to populate each block in each of the directions keeping in mind that the total number of nodes is equal to the total number of blocks multiplied by the number of points per block in each direction. For extremely large numbers of nodes, this will result in longer run times of the simulation. The final property allows us to define a maximum node to sample distance. If used, any node that is further from a sample than this distance will not be generated. This can assist in limiting the number of nodes to the sample region and cutting down runtime. When generating nodes from a block model, the coordinates and block size will automatically be generated. You will only need to determine the number of points per block in each orientation that you wish to create. In this case, nodes will only be generated within existing blocks. The next properties tab is the reblocking tab. By default, the conditional simulation component will reblock the simulation results to the block size specified previously in the node definition. The reblocking table allows you to either define and generate a set of reblocking sizes or input each block size directly into the table. Each entry in the table will generate a separate reblocked results table. The boundary properties window allows us to merge datasets during the simulation so that we can produce soft boundary realizations. The columns represent the domain being run while the rows indicate the data to be used during that run. By entering the letter M into any of the white cells, we flag the row domain as available for use when running the column domain. The Vario search tab provides options for selecting variography models and search parameters for each domain. The domain is first selected in the drop-down box and the associated continuity models selected in the box adjacent. 
Supervisor will automatically select a normal scores variogram for the domain if one is present. Search ranges and angles can be defined manually, or the checkbox can be used to automatically populate these from the continuity models. The original data samples properties relate to input sample requirements when conducting the simulation. If the assigned data to node checkbox is enabled, the closest sample to each node will be moved to that node. A sample will only ever be assigned to one node, and any samples not assigned to nodes will not be used during the simulation. This option will significantly reduce the runtime of the simulation, but it is important to understand the relationship between your nodes and samples and whether important data will be lost. The properties for number of required samples, minimum octants informed, and number required per octant can be set so that for any node that doesn't meet those criteria, a value of minus 99 will be assigned. The probability for accepting a previously simulated node can also be set to ensure a slightly larger search range is used towards the end of the simulation run when more data is available. A maximum number of previously simulated nodes can also be set to cap the total number of values that are used during the simulation. Once I am content with the properties I have set, I can run the simulation by pressing the update button. A progress bar will be displayed at the bottom of the window and update as each simulation completes. At the end of the run, the elapsed time will also be displayed. The results of the conditional simulation will be split up between the point support and each of the defined reblocked models. These can be exported in CSV format by right-clicking the results table and selecting the export option. Each of the results tables can be interrogated using almost all of supervisors' tools as if they were loaded data. For other functions, they can be exported and reloaded as either point or block model files. Various post-processing components have been automatically added to each of the results. Additional post-processing components can also be added through the right-click menu as normal. In the point support results, a QQ plot is shown which allows us to compare the input data with each of the realizations which will be plotted as a swarm in the one plot. In each of the reblocked results tables, three main post-processing components will have been added the GT curves, optimum dig line, and probability cutoffs. The grade tonnage analysis component provides three different views for comparing and validating the simulations against each other or against loaded models. The first view provides a swarm style view where each simulation is colored independently along with the E-type which is shown in bold. Each simulation can be clicked to highlight that simulation against the others. The second view cleans up the swarm and colors it gray to remove the focus from the simulations and place them on either the E-type or any other models which can be loaded in using the model data tabs on the right. It is important that the comparison models are loaded using the same grouping and domain structure as the simulations. The third view draws an envelope around the simulation values for each cutoff grade. Median and control lines can also be shown using the properties window and any loaded block models can be overlain for comparison. In this view, the median and control lines do not correspond to a single simulation, but represent the variability across all simulations for each cutoff. A box and whisker plot can also be overlain for each cutoff to further illustrate distributions. The optimum dig line component shows a 2D cross-section of the simulated model with cells colored based on cutoff grade. Setting the cutoff value, risk aversion, and resource preservation factors will cause blocks which don't meet the criteria to be colored in grayscale instead. The model can be further interrogated by using the elevation slider to step through the model in the Z direction. The probability plot component displays a 2D cross-section of the simulated model with cells colored by probability that that cell is above a selected cutoff grade. Multiple cutoffs can be generated using the table in the properties panel and can be viewed together or independently. The model can be interrogated by using the view slider and the orientation can be adjusted to step through the model in either of the X, Y or Z directions. Statistics for the mean above and below the cutoff are also displayed and can be toggled.